myself and three other mates are going on a road trip around Ireland. I've never seen anything like it, and yet, truly. We've only got six nights, but we're going to cram in as much as possible, seeing some of the top tourist sites, soaking up the coastal scenery, and of course, enjoying a fair few pints in the quality Irish pubs. So this trip to Ireland was back in the summer of 2014 and the year beforehand I'd done my nine month round the world trip from Hong Kong to New York and so I spent all of 2014 editing that series and then in October 2014 I did a trip to Tibet and Nepal and by the time I'd finished editing and releasing all 11 episodes of HK2MY I was like oh, I want to work on the Everest trip next and edit and release that. And then I continued to go on more new trips and make more new films. So unfortunately, the island video just sat on a hard drive and never got made. But this year in 2020, since we've had an abundance of free time, I finally got around to editing it. And it's shot on my old handy cam, so the quality isn't up to the standards that I can make today. So it might be a bit rough and raw around the edges, but there's still a ton of fun moments because we crammed so much into these few days in Ireland. Now the genesis of this trip was we were actually going to a couple of Brian Adams concerts and my good Irish friend Niall was like, well if you're coming over here for the gigs, I may as well drive you around and show you a bit of Ireland whilst you're here. He's planned this ultimate Irish road trip around it that's so good, now it's just a shame that we have to go to the gigs because the gigs are actually just going to spoil the trip. <laughs> They're going to get in the way of a good Irish road trip. So it's going to be the four of us travelling around together. I'm flying in from London, Steve's flying in from Sheffield, Mandy's flying all the way in from Michigan in the States, and Niall's going to be our local Irish tour guide. Nice. What's special about the Guinness here then now? Why is this funny? That's it. No time for conversation, Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, cheers. So we've just had our first pint of the trip. It's the first pint, we're all fine. <laughs> Except Steve's had his first pint. <laughs> Look at that grin. <laughs> Look at that grin. It's feeling good. Uh, yeah, here and here. Yeah, cheers. Now, is this supposed to be the oldest pub in Ireland? But it's not. It's not. This, this place claims to be the oldest pub in, in Ireland, but it's not. Sean's Bar in Athlone is. Okay. Give it two days, three days, and we'll be there. Nice. Which will feed nicely into the next course of this, yeah. uh, the next edit of this uh, video. <laughs> That's the uh, shittest bar in Dublin, big tourist trap, so we're not going in. Oh, it's an absolute shithole. Uh, if you want to pay seven euro for a pint, we're going to a real Irish pub now where. It's only 650 for a pint. Yeah, it's only 650, <laughs> which is. Uh... We've got our own little snug. VIP compartment here. What happens in the snug stays in the snug. <laughs> After we'd knocked back a few pints and bows, all logic of what venue to go to next completely went out the window. It's a cafe in Dublin called the Thunder Road Cafe. Gotta go there as Springsteen fans. What we didn't realise is that it's Mandy's first meal in Ireland. We basically taking her to an American restaurant. Pretty much. So this is the real island. Needless to say, we all woke up pretty hungover in the morning. And what better way to cure that than by heading to the Guinness factory? You say it's the number one tourist attraction in Ireland? It is. Playing to, play to stereotypes. Yeah, because tourists are that imaginative. <laughs> <laughs> this is the map for the self guided tour, okay? Pretty fucking big. But the most important thing is a complimentary free drink. 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Ready for some Guinness, Mandy? Ready. My favorite sure. beer. The Guinness Brewery was founded in 1759 by Arthur Guinness, who leased the building for 9,000 years. Guinness is made from water, barley, roast malt extract, hops, and brewer's yeast. A portion of the barley is roasted to give Guinness its dark color and characteristic taste and the brewery now outputs over 50 million UK barrels every year. Are you ready to taste the Guinness? I'm loving the dramatic music as we go in. 
Um, if you'd like to place your drink down along with the available in the room and just relax and enjoy the elements of this room. The first step in tasting this like a true expert is to stand up straight. Perfect, you need to look straight ahead, take a deep breath in, and then pull as much of that black beer up through the head as possible. So it's because here, I don't want to once again, I'm Stuart, it's nice to meet you all. I'll be teaching you how to pour up behind the Guinness. What you do is you aim the top, the flow of the beer, you aim it onto this gold harp. Aim the flow onto the harp. Then at this stage, what you want to do is pull the tap all the way back. Okay? Okay. So now just straighten your glass out, all the way. Then when it's the middle of that golden harp, okay. you take your flow on, okay? Leave your beer to settle. That's step four. Perfect. Like a champion. Bring your beer back onto the top. But the difference now is you push the top away from you. By pushing it away, what you're doing is restricting the gas flow. You're literally topping up for a full pint. Certified, created not just any pint of Guinness, the perfect pint of Guinness. Get in there, man. Shh. I'm just going to cut that bit out. How's the Guinness going down, Steve? Yeah, that's a uh, pint of Guinness. Where it's brewed. The thing is, I don't actually like Guinness, so I sort of just drinking it because I have to. I don't like it at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. You guys don't Guinness at 11 o'clock in the morning. Yep. Yeah. What else would you do in Dublin? <laughs> We are leaving Dublin, first stop. I had a great time last night and today at the Guinness factory. It's amazing, I loved it. Cool, cool. Now heading to our first stop. And what's the place we're staying at tonight? Tramor in County Waterford. Cool, and what's to do in Tramor? Drink. Cool. Rather than heading straight down the coast to Tramor, Niall took us on a scenic route through Wicklow Mountains National Park. That's what we came here for. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. It just looks amazing. I thought I was run down the hill. Yeah, you'd probably break your ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Remind you of Hillsborough, Steve. Uh, Hillsborough's more epic. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of yep. sheep, sheep on the road down here. Oh! Let me get a picture if they stay. This is awesome. The trash. <laughs> I bet these guys taste delicious. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm bad for Canadian. Next up, we stopped at Blessington Lake, which was featured in the film P.S. I Love You, the 2007 romantic comedy with Hilary Swank and Gerard Butler. That's really good. Mandy made me watch the film about two days ago. <laughs> Loved every second of it. Did. What's the significance of this beach? Do a whole PS I Love You tour. <laughs> and this is where they film some of the movie. Favorite film of all time? Yes. How long what's the other favorite film? Titanic. Titanic. And so we're going to Belfast. <laughs> it's gonna be good. This is amazing. What's the uh, scene from PS I Love You that you love? When she walks into the pub and sexy Gerard Butler is standing there singing and playing guitar to her. He comes right up to her and follows her and he kisses her. And I thought I'd come to Ireland. And every and stuff would be like live music with like hot Irish guys like singing and singing which song? Galway Girl, of course. Cool. What else? Mandy's goal for this trip is for this scene to become a reality. I'm gonna meet my Irish version of a Gerard Butler and fall in love. Aww. I wish. We'll be going to plenty of pubs on this trip, so we'll see how this pans out. And speaking of pubs, after a couple of hours more driving, we made it to Tremor. See, this is what I hope to find in tiny little towns like this, is a little pub with so much character. And it's amazing. And nothing matches, and my favorite one of these things that doesn't match is over here. We have Jesus, quite literally, hanging out with Buddha. Oh my God. As you do. I love the uh, traditional Irish music in this pub. Love it, love it. I can't believe they played this song. What a coincidence, what a coincidence. We just happened to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We stayed last night and went to that awesome, awesome pub. Today we're heading off to Cork, as Steve just said. Whoa! Oh, sorry, just sorry to spoil you. I didn't get wet. Uh, it's where I, it's where I used to, it's where I used to go on holidays when I was young. That's good. I think one of the biggest beaches in Ireland. So we're going over there 
now, soon. Yeah. Three pillars down there, the metal man. Power's going to do some cliff diving. Yeah. Cliff uh, diving always goes so well for me. Break another shoulder, dislocate another shoulder. Yeah. And then we're hitting the road to uh, Cork via Cove, via Middleton to get my car fixed yeah. and Kinsale. Never yeah. going to see Brian Adams. So. Brian Adams tonight. A good day. Excited, Mandy? So excited. <laughs> These cliffs are like prime real estate for Carl jumping in and breaking his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Learn from my mistake. All these cliff edges just bring back bad memories. It's like, no! It was just under a couple of hours driving until we arrived at the small town of Cove. What's the crack now? Where are we at? Cove. Where the Titanic made its last stop. Where it was then known as Queenstown. Yes. Known as Queenstown it was? It was, back in the day, yeah. Back in the day. Now the boat didn't actually dock here, did it? Yeah. They did, no. Docked out in the bay. Yeah. The Titanic had set off from Southampton and made stops in Cherbourg and then here in Cove before heading across the Atlantic on its doomed maiden voyage. The Titanic would have stopped out there, yeah. coming into the bay. And everyone would have got on here and the tender ship would have brought everybody out. It would look huge in this little bay. Yeah. Steve's going to teach us how to spit like a man. <laughs> like a man. Like a man. Like a man. Come on, Steve. I'm spitting on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Leo can pull it off. Yeah. You know, Chew tobacco like a man. Dock. It's known as a ship of dreams. <laughs> and it, it was. really is. It really <laughs> was. <laughs> so the same statue on Ellis Island in New York. What's this statue about then now? Go. Go. Haven't a fucking clue. Go. Tour guide Avent. Haven't a fucking clue. It navigates the ship safely back to shore. And that worked out so well with the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that. <laughs> with one major exception. <laughs> Just admiring the Titanic gifts. I have this DVD here of uh, the ultimate conspiracy theory. Why did they sink the Titanic? I think I know the answer to that one. Or could it be the truth? It's not. And then Steve has one better. This, this is the book you've got here, Steve. Book for kids. The yeah. Titanic coloring book. Just, <laughs> just teach a three-year-old to casually color in people fighting for their lives. Yeah, just drowning slowly. <laughs> you're not really, no son, you're not really capturing the horror. Uh, they've got too much colour on their faces. Remember, they're dying. They're dying. Yeah. Actually, there's, there's dead bodies in the water in this <laughs> colouring book. <laughs> oh my god, it's awful. Unbelievable, Jeff. Yes, please. <laughs> Unbelievable, Jeff. Oh, the heart of the ocean. The heart of the ocean. Oh, you the found it ocean. in a gift shop. <laughs> yeah. How much did it cost? Four ninety nine. <laughs> Not bad. After this, we made our way to Cork for the first of the Brian Adams gigs. Since we were front row center, we weren't allowed to film anything, which is kind of a shame because the gig completely blew away our expectations. Cork, absolutely fantastic. Uh, one of the best gigs I have actually been to of Brian's. I uh, loved it. The crowd was so loud. We were so singing on to every word. Yeah, we didn't expect a lot either. We were just like, oh, you know, it'll be, it'll be all right. But it was, it really was a lot better than I thought. And you could tell the band were blown away, but as you can see it in their eyes, it was oh, yeah. Oh. We'll be seeing them again tonight in Westport, but first we'll be stopping at two of the most popular spots on the Irish tourist trail, which are Blarney Castle and the Cliffs of Moher. And joining us in the car today is Lena from Denmark, who's over here for the gigs as well. Back on the road, awesome day ahead. Lena's joining us for this drive, and we've got to fit an extra bag in the car. Niall believes he can do it. I'm confident. If this doesn't work out, that there sounds we go. like a challenge. Slam the bastard. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> Job <Yeah>. done. <laughs> now we just gotta fit in the car. <laughs> Blarney Castle was built in 1446 and it features the Stone of Eloquence, which is better known as the Blarney Stone. Legend has it that if you kiss the stone, you'll be endowed with the gift of the gap, meaning you'll be able to speak with flattery, sweetened by humor and flavored by wit. Get a gift of the gap, is it? 
gift of the gab. Which sounds like a disease. Hashtag Darren Sandy. <laughs> Basically, if you kiss his tongue, you turn into Darren. Oh, Christ. I'm sure I want to do it now. That's like a plague along the world, isn't it? There are different stories about the origins of the stone, but it's placed at the top of the castle, and tourists are allowed to kiss it, although it's not the easiest of things to do. Okay, I'm I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> Well, that's it, well done. Yeah. It's a lot farther back than you think, <laughs> I don't know if I need the gift of gab. Jeez. It's all right. Oh, like you go, you go further and further back. You go. No, you go. Hey, you. Oh, shit. I, I didn't think it was that far. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. That's it, well done. All right. Yeah, go ahead. I've never kissed a rat before. <laughs> I've got like proper vertigo going, actually. Yeah? Uh, that's the wishing steps. If you go up them backwards with your eyes closed and think of a wish, it should come true within a year. So, Premier League, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, it was about Wednesday. Hitting the road. We had a lot of ground to cover today, and we made a quick stop at Bunratty, just outside of Limerick. What have we got, tour guide? You are now standing in front of the second worst tourist trap with regards to pubs in Ireland. You've seen the Temple Bar, and then you've seen Dirty Nellies. Cool. Which is why we're not going in. <laughs> it's not great. So, yeah, castle we got here? Bunratty Castle. After about two and a half hours of driving, we made it to the cliffs of Moher. You like it? I have no words for, for this place. It's amazing. So you never seen anything like it? I've never seen anything like it, I mean it, truly. Truly mean that. <laughs> what hour? This is unreal. Just saying, this is not a good day for my vertigo at all. Have you got your camera wrapped around your wrist there? Yeah. Slightly. <laughs> I'm thinking these might have been used in a Harry Potter film. Half Blood Prince. said that to me before. Half Blood Prince. Yeah. I reckon this was using Half Blood Prince when they go and find the first uh, Horcrux in the caves. Over there is the Iron Islands, so on the opening sequence of Father Ted. Yeah. As it's coming in, there's just a big shipwreck on the beach, and I don't know whether you can zoom in or not, but that's, it's over there on the, on the right. Like it, mate? Hey, mate, lovely. Lovely little Sunday afternoon stroll. <laughs> Stealing my thunder by making a video. Yeah, I'm gonna let's make it way better than yours. <laughs> we still had another two and a half hours worth of driving to get up to Westport for the gig tonight. Let's go, 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 go,
Street gig number two, Westport Festival. Be ready. All right, we made it here for 8.30, so we've got an hour to spare. And luckily on now is cool and the gang. It's gonna be awesome. Well, we got there. It seemed like the entire town was going to this show. As soon as we entered, a complete party scene. This is so cool, it's so cool. Our plan for Westport is we'll just get there, stay by the beer tent, just chill out, dance around, and enjoy it from afar. Long queue for the beer. Very long queue. We're like, well, we don't care. We get we have front row center last night. We're just gonna go, hang out in the back, whatever happens. We rocked up an hour before the show. <laughs> got 15 to 20 rows back. Just managed to weave away to like 10 rows in front for cool again. <laughs> One of my favourite parts of the show was cool on the gang, the support act. We just turned it into just a massive party, singing all the hits. The sun's shining, you've got two points in your hand, dancing like idiots. And it was like one huge party. Basically 10,000 people wishing they were as cool as cool the gang on stage. And then before Brian came on, some people moved out, so we got like, second right up row. there. We've oh, snuck up the third row, have we? We're all going to be eight hours after the door's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of queue, we'll do a road trip rewinding. This was a festival, we thought we were only going to get a 90-minute show, we still got the full set. No special request on Ike, but he did Kids Wanna Rock, which always makes me happy. Love the whole day. It's just cool summer party atmosphere, great energy for the band. Oh it was great, it was great. Keith yeah. was on fire as usual, yeah. lost his fingers in Western Ireland. After a very long but fun day, 
we found a quiet pub to chill in to finish off the night. We've got a lock in now, so this night's going to be good. Steve's had two points, fair play, fair play, good effort. <laughs> Have you, have you enjoyed your day with our it's road trip? Yeah. Lena was great, she fit straight in the group. Oh, she was awesome. Like I said, Lena and all, she was brilliant. It's a shame she had to go. Yeah. yeah. We would like to have her for the whole trip. On the road again, we had an easier day ahead of us as we drive back down the coast to Galway and then inland to Niles' home of Walsh Island. What are you excited about today? What's happening today? Uh, Galway, which will be really cool, I think. Why, why do you want to go to Galway? Because the stupid song and P.S. I Love You. The P.S. Yeah. I Love You tour continues. <laughs> uh, how's the house tricks? How's Steve's down there today? Awesome, mate, yeah. Good stuff. Took a love nice it. little walk. Love it live. Niles feeling good. He is, yeah. I look forward to uh, another nice road trip and a couple of beers to kick up, finish off the night. A couple. That'd be good. A couple. Yeah. Well, pretty much going to get scudder tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's this village? Uh, it's called Kong. Um, would be famous for the setting of The Quiet Man, one of John John Wayne's most famous most famous movies. Uh, set here in Ireland, and um, it's probably the most famous Irish movie of all time. And I've never seen it. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> but you have seen Pierce, I Love You*, so that's important. Uh, yeah, twice. <laughs> and I, hate, I hate myself for it. That's all that really matters, actually. <laughs> After about an hour of driving, we made it to the popular seaside town of Galway. The song Galway Girls, a true story, apparently, by Steve Irwin. Yeah, Steve Earl. Steve Earl, yeah. Or Steve Irwin's here. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey! <laughs> what we have here is a Galway American girl. singer that's been walking down along this strand here and met a girl from Galway. Yeah. Fell in love with her. He's never told anybody the name of the person, but that's the story. Mandy's happy. A lot of people might stick around for a big night out here, but Niall had other plans for us. What have we here? Sean's Bar, the oldest in Ireland and possibly the oldest in the world. Cool, because we were at one in Dublin that they claim is... Yeah, the Brazen Head, um, there's a debate over that, but this is in the Guinness Book of Records as being the oldest in Ireland. Cool. And, uh, and they're waiting on confirmation for the oldest in the world. Yes, and we are about to have our first pint on day five of this trip. <laughs> first of many. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, right, uh, sawdust on the floor. Uh, old pubs in Ireland used to have it. Uh, every pub in Ireland used to have it actually back in the day. Uh, reason being, it was used to mop up spilled beer and also it was um, an easy way of cleaning the floor if people got sick in the middle of in the middle of the night and they would continue on drinking and they would just throw down more sawdust. <laughs> very very close to hitting the uh, thousand mile mark thousand mile thousand kilometer mark on our trip we're at 999.3 problem is I think it's gonna take a while to actually hit the thousand mark the kilometer mark because traffic jam okay we're in Tullamore just down the road from Niles home little village yeah. and tell us a fun fact about uh, this cinema right here I shit you not, this is where Kim Kardashian and Kanye West spent their honeymoon. They went into that cinema? That cinema there. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> In Tullamore, we went for a beer with Daryl, who I met on the Kiwi Experience bus last year. And then we all headed to Walsh Island so we could have a few drinks at Niles Local. How far are we from your house, Niall? Uh, four miles. Four miles. Why aren't you driving, Niall? I'm drunk. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a store? Okay, I can see why this possibly doesn't have an ATM. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is your local pub. Let me just let me just pan and get this all in. Done. Okay. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Darren never heard of Watch Island and say on the No, it's not even an island. We were having coming out, we were getting ferry across. I live in here. You live in here? Yeah, Mort. You see who this guy is? <laughs> I want to be famous. <laughs> Village. You're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> right, Billy? That's it, Billy, yeah. That's it. No surprise. 
<laughs> That's a resident hippie. Dave. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liam is an Arsenal fan, so yeah. that's his. He can't be having it. Yeah. That's his wife, Bridget. <laughs> hey, folks. Hey. Brilliant. And that is. That's Walsh Island. That's Walsh Island. That is Walsh Island, yeah. <laughs> My friend from the Kiwi Experience, Daryl's here. He had me sitting the camera's face for like five weeks, <laughs> and now he's got it again for another few minutes. But yeah, reunion, piss up. Except he's got to go to work tomorrow. So yeah, he's bailing. I'm going home. We were heading to a pub in the next town, which should have some live music or karaoke, and maybe, just maybe, Mandy could finally have her P.S. I Love You dream come true and be serenaded with the song Galway Girl. Uh, we got a good experience of what uh, an Irish pub was and Mandy actually got to hear Galway Girl being played. If you can say that. But the guy made up his own words and uh, it was about a Galway hooker. Well, it was 3 a.m. and the long walk on. I was fucked out of the club. I met a little girl and we stopped to talk. I said, how much are you long? <laughs> and I asked that girl, will me visa do? She said, I've a chip and pin between me both. And I knew right then, oh, we'd be taking a tour. Down the salt hill from with a Galway hope. So every notion Mandy has of Irish men serenading her now has been completely and totally shattered. Let's just check in with Mandy, see how she's feeling about it. Not very good. I'm depressed. Is that destroyed I hope it's and dreams are all destroyed now. No, you're like, I warned you. He did warn yeah, me. But... So, yeah. The best thing about it was, it wasn't just about a Galway hooker, it was about a Galway hooker that turned out to be a man. Well, up in the cell, she was not there, she was taken off her clothes. More things popped up when she flashed at me, she was no longer a girl. And I said to him, and his name was Jack, Jack! Is there any chance of me walking back? Oh! Ah, for one day, one day, one day. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that to have like dream versus reality. The piece I love you, and then the reality is that. There's no hope for me. <laughs> It's the last day of our trip, and we're finishing off our little tour around Ireland by driving up to Belfast. Castle used in Braveheart, because most of Braveheart was actually shot in Ireland. I'm gonna Google which scene in Braveheart it was. It doubled up as the city of York. <laughs> it's supposed to be York Castle in Braveheart there. Continuing on the uh, Brian Adams theme this trip. Uh, the first and only time I've come to Ireland is when I went to the Slane Castle Festival here in 2000 and uh, Brian Adams was headlining 70,000 people in a field and we were right in the front. What I didn't realise till now though was that Niall was at that gig as well and he was probably standing about five people away from me. But yeah, it was an amazing gig. This is crazy, I've seen the video a thousand times. All in all, it was just under a three hour journey until we arrived in Belfast late that morning. This was actually my second time in the city as I came here a couple of years ago with my mate Jay for our friends Andrew and Lee's wedding. Right, so that's regular Carl, just looking tired. Just, you know, and then like serial killer mode. You know, like just murdered a hooker. We immediately fell in love with the city, the friendly people and all the amazing pubs and so I was excited to be back here now to explore some more of it. Want to film Game of Thrones? The main thing we were going to check out this afternoon was the Titanic Museum. It's the thing that Mandy's been looking forward to the most out of the entire trip. How excited are you? Could you die right now? I could die right now. You could totally die right now. Yeah, I like Titanic even more than P.S. I love you, so... Which is a lot. That, that is a lot. <laughs> Niall? 
Yeah, fourth time here. <laughs> Second time in three months. Super but, psyched. Uh, actually, it's, it is good. It is good. Okay. The tour will be good. So, guys, are you ready to go back to Titanic? Oh, oh yes. The ship is uh, nice, huh? Yeah, it's an Irish ship. It's English, no? No, oh, it was built in Ireland. 15,000 Irishmen built this ship. Solid as a rock. Big Irish hands. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to film inside the main museum, but you can on the surrounding grounds, which used to be the shipyard where the Titanic was actually built. It took about 26 months to construct the ship and was one of three Olympic-class ocean liners built by White Star Line. The ship was 882 feet or 269 meters long and 104 feet or 32 meters high. So this line here represents the width of Titanic, so this is like the outline. So we're actually standing in the only place in the world you can stand where Titanic once was. This is the only place that she's on land, so this is her footprint. After completing its sea trials, Titanic sailed from Belfast to Southampton to begin its maiden voyage on the 10th of April 1912. This is the uh, nomadic which uh, went from Cherbourg to take him out to the boat and the uh, unsinkable Molly Brown got on it. The Titanic sank in the early mornings of the 15th of April 1912 and out of the 2,224 passengers and crew on board, more than 1,500 died. Jesse Jason. Must have been Jack Bass. <laughs> well, that was a fictional character. <laughs> It's the return of our favourite colouring book. The corpses in the water, is it? Drowning, are we? <laughs> colouring them blue, am I? <laughs> the Titanic colouring book, yes. We went there. <laughs> For our final evening together, we did our default activity of checking out the local pubs. One of the interesting things about the pubs around here is uh, they have photos of when they got bombed up around the bars. <laughs> and so I was actually, this sounds going to sound weird, I was filming in the toilets. I was in the cubicle and they have photos of when they got bombed. Yeah. Uh, but I think, I guess it's important to remind people of the history and stuff, finding what went down here. It's, it's a bit weird. There as well, it's a bit weird. Wow. Well, I don't know what goes on in that bar. Andrea and Lee also join us for a drink with a new addition to their family. <gasps> Good boy. Good boy. No, I'm Hiya. Hiya, oh. oh. Hiya, Carl. That's so anything big happened in your life in the last 15 months, then, Andrew? <laughs> Ireland trip overall. Steve, you first. How have you found Ireland? I mean, when people have asked me before to go to Ireland, I just said no because it'll just be like the UK and stuff. But you know, I found it. I found it, I found it really like the UK. If I'm honest. <laughs> Come back, no, come I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> this lad has been an absolute legend. He really has. Yeah, I mean, Ireland, it's a completely different pace of life, isn't it? More relaxed and yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Coming to Ireland really has been like a dream come true to me. Like, I've always wanted to go. Thanks to all these guys. It was like a trip of a lifetime for me, it really was. You had your dream come true last night as well in the bar. Oh, yeah. With Galway? Drunk, <laughs> drunk guy singing about hookers from Galway. But it's just really, really actually packs fun yeah. few days. Um, it really has. Done, done so <laughs> much, like what Steve was saying, it's felt like a long six days, it really has, because um, of the amount of stuff we've done. Yeah, everything feels like it was forever ago, and it was like earlier that day, you know? Yeah. Westport, if it came a day later, it would have been, it would have actually made this absolutely perfect, because we would have yeah. got to see Kerry. Yeah. We would have got to stay in Killarney and, and done the Ring of Kerry and the Gap of Dunlow. And, but the whole coastal area of Western Ireland is just stunning, you know? I've absolutely, I've loved it and genuinely don't want, to, don't, want, don't want this to finish. This guy is an absolute legend, I mean, the things he's done for us this week, being a perfect gentleman, a brilliant host, he's gone above and beyond for us. Yeah, it's been a brilliant time, a brilliant time and uh, I definitely want to come back to Ireland and see more. Yeah. Ireland's amazing. Um, oh, for this guy. Well, I enjoyed most of you guys. Love That's you. a bit too, uh, <laughs> too much now, Steve. Yeah, Steve's done it.
Johnny dancing. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 No, I missed it! Oh. I missed it! I got it. Happened. Do it out again. <laughs> We're in the final bow. Look at the clocks on the wall. We've got Sydney, we've got Paris, and then we have Muff, because everyone wants to know what Muff time it is. And down here, Stevie's favourite. Cloud number nine. Cloud number nine. So you've just gone from six to midnight. <laughs>